Hi friends, welcome to Interactive Medicine. In this section, we can talk about the hypoxia. The word means hypo means it means low, and oxia means oxygen. It is the condition that causes deficiency in the amount of oxygen reaching the tissues. Okay, friends, don't confuse it with the hypoxemia. What is mean by hypoxemia? It is the low level of oxygen in the blood. Hypoxemia or low blood oxygen is defined as a condition where arterial oxygen tension is below 90 millimeter mercury. And why? Why is the oxygen is very important for cell? We know it is helps in the ATP production of in cell. And if there is no ATP production in cell, it will lead to cell death. The ATP acts as a currency for the cell. We know the aerobic respiration. Above around 30 to 36 ATP is produced in aerobic respiration by using various kinds of chemical reactions. Oxygen is very important for aerobic respiration. Why is so important? Because it is the final acceptor of electrons in electron transport system. It is the electron transport system. It is the oxygen. And it is the final acceptor of electron and it leads to the formation of metabolic water. Also, in this process, the ATP will regenerate. So, this oxygen is the main ingredient for the production of ATP production. And if there is no a oxygen in the cells, what happens? It leads to the formation of anaerobic respiration and lactic acid accumulation which helps the production of 2 ATP but it is much less energy than aerobic respiration and also the ATP dependent Na plus sodium uh, sodium potassium ATP won't work here is our sodium potassium pump in normal cases sodium potassium pump is made up of two alpha and beta subunits and it helps in pump out the Na plus from the cytosol to the extracellular fluid and helps in the transport of K plus from extracellular fluid into intracellular fluid. But we should remember that if, uh, if there is Na plus, there is also with water. So in normal cases in extracellular fluid, there is so much Na plus and what but if ATP is devoided in the absence of ATP or decreasing the amount of ATP the Na plus K plus ATPs won't work so it will lead to increase Na plus inside the cell also water also will enter so it will lead to cell swelling if there is a hypoxia persist so atp will does not product so sodium and water move into cell and potassium moves out of cell osmotic pressure increases and more water moves into the cell cisternae of endoplasmic reticulum distend rupture and form vacuoles and extensive vacuolation will happen leads to hydropic degeneration in what conditions the patients experience hypoxia it's due to maybe it is it is maybe due to trauma stroke congestive heart failure heart attack hemorrhagic stroke peripheral arterial diseases cancer multiple organ failure unstable angina respiratory diseases and what is the symptoms of hypoxia in early there is a restlessness anxiety tachycardia or tachypnea in late it is bradycardia extreme restlessness dyspnea it looks severe early rut is laid to bed in pediatrics it means fines Feeding difficulty, inspiratory stridor, nares flare, expiratory grunting, channel retractions. Okay, friends. And 
we are talking about the cell swelling what happens if the cell swell so we know here is our cell and we have so many microvilli in the cell so uh, if there is increase in cell swelling of increasing uh, amount of fluid inside the cell it can leads to the decreasing absorption surface area in microvilli and leads to the decreasing absorption here is our normal cell and if the cell is undergoing hypoxic condition the first initial state is reversible injury the water and anaplasis enter into the cell so there is cell swelling that can happen membrane blooding and cytoskeleton deformation the ribosome is attached from the rough endoplasmic reticulum due, uh, due to endoplasmic reticulum swelling and also organal swellings the nuclear chromatin clumping can happen and if the endoplasmic reticulum swells and the ribosome is detached what happens is uh, decreasing protein synthesis will happen we know the proteins are very important for making the structural framework of cell so decreasing in the production of cytosol skeleton will happen and decreasing the cell receptor will happen many other enzymes won't work so there is a so there is a serious damage to cell can happen if the ribosome is detached from the rough endoplasmic reticulum and also we talk about the anaerobic respiration what happens in anaerobic respiration the accumulation of lactic acid will increase so the ph will decrease inside the cell which leads which means the increasing h plus this h plus the keep on increasing it can rupture the lysosome membrane Uh, lysosome is a single membrane bound organ which can easily uh, destructed by the acidotic condition inside the cell so hydrolytic hydrolytic enzyme will get into cell if the hypoxia is persists and it will leads to the irreversible injury the irreversible injury is due to the calcium influx influx of the calcium to plus calcium increase in calcium inside the cell it can leads to activation of many unwanted enzymes the enzymes activated by calcium we make a code here phospholipase so first letter p is stands for proteases and it break down proteins uh, spindle fibers microtubules are involved in the cytoskeleton so deformity in the cell structure or cell shape will happen and hydrolysis h stands for hydrolysis the hydrolysis is we already studied it is come from lysosome and it is destructed by high lactic acid these hydrolytic enzymes can destroy the cell organelles and ph phospholipases the calcium can activate the phospholipases which destroy the cell membrane it is a serious condition because the hydrolytic enzymes the ingredients inside the cells can penetrate or get into the blood system so it can get into the circulatory system it can reach into various cell organs so it can leads to many other manifestation clinical manifestations it's a very severe condition and also the calcium can activate the endonucleases endonucleases are responsible for the breakdown of dna pycnosis karyolysis karyolysis the calcium can enter into mitochondria through the mitochondrial calcium uniporter is a transmembrane protein that allows the passage of calcium ions from cell cytosol into mitochondria its activity is regulated by micu1 and micu2 which together with mcu make up the mitochondrial calcium uniporter complex and it can make a pore 
in the mitochondria so the cytochrome c where is present in the electron transport system it can get into the cytosol it will trigger the apoptosis which is mean the programmed cell death and this cytochrome c is going through mitochondrial permeability transition pole is a non-specific channel formed by components from inner and outer mitochondrial membranes and appears to be involved in the release of mitochondrial components during cell death here is the pathogenesis of ischemic and hypoxic injury in reversible injury decreased generation of cellular atp intracellular lactic acid leads to nuclear clumping damage to plasma membrane pump which is atp dependent na plus k plus pump and calcium pump reduced protein synthesis it's due to dispersed ribosomes irreversible cell injury what happens here the mitochondria is damaged increase in the calcium influx activated phospholipase leads to membrane damage intracellular proteases leads to cytoskeleton damage activated endonuclease nucleases leads to nuclear damage we already talked about the cell injury normal cell a reversible injury what happens here the membrane blubbing ribosomal detachment endoplasmic reticulum selling nuclear chromatin clumping cellular swelling mitochondrial swelling can happen uh, in irreversible cell injury the lysosome will rupture phospholipid membrane damage nuclear changes can result in pycnosis karyorexis karyolysis and increase the mitochondrial permeability i think this video is helpful for you if you have any doubts or if you have any suggestions uh, make a comments below and if you like this video make a thumbs up and share to your friends have a nice day bye